Gilarda. Should I keep watching episodes of Burn Notice or should we go work on the car? Mira says we work on the car. So up next, we install the timing chains and the guides on the RTR Spec 2. So I got my new pistons from a friend of mine off of a local Mustang group, like I was saying. We're going to put these ones in. As you can see, we've already got everything on here cleaned up and ready to go. We also have our new piston rings right here. I did get brand new piston rings to go on this. I got these from Ford. So we're going to go ahead and open these up, and I'm going to show you how I put this together, and then we're going to drop the last piston in. This one's going to be hard to see. When you're looking at this ring, it's pretty easy to put it on. We're not going to need any of the pliers to get this on. There's little tiny ridges at the back of this one on top of what you see here. That is where your oil ring needs to rest in front of. If it's on top of it, you have a little bit of problem with these things not moving around the way that they need to. So we're gonna go ahead first and put this one here in. I can do this one here by hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it all the way down here. and drop it in. So next I like to move on to one of my oil rings. So here this is again, this thing, pretty easy to move around so we're not gonna need the pliers for this one either. When I'm putting these on, I kind of like to get everything set up to where it needs to be. Um, there's people that say each ring needs to be at a certain degree or whatnot. I like to make sure that they're all 90 degrees apart. That's what I've seen before, that's what I kind of go by. So we're gonna start over here. Make sure it's nestled in there the way it needs to be. And just kind of work it around. Bring it slowly down to make sure it doesn't get stuck on top of that ridge. Move it around. Move it around nice. I got a little bit of play, but not too much. And then I have our other oil ring scraper here, so we're gonna go ahead and I like to flip it a full 180 around from where I put the other one. So I'd make sure it gets down in there below where it needs to be. Start bringing it around. All right, there we go. The other one's in. Still moving around the way it needs to. Everything's in there. Looking good. Everything is lined up where I want it to be. All right, so here are our last two rings. You can see these things here are definitely thicker. Um, on these, to make sure that you put these in correct, there is going to be a little bit of a beveled edge on these ones here but one thing you're going to want to look for is there should be a little dot on the top of each one of them again it's going to be very very hard to see it on these but trust me there's a little dot here on the side of each one of these this dot needs to be facing up so we're going to go ahead and start putting these on with these pliers i got from drew um i don't think these cost very much i'm pretty sure he picked these up from harbor freight um, they work pretty easy all you have to do Slide your ring here into these little valleys. And then slowly open it up and it separates it for you. Another thing I like to do that I saw somebody else do is I'll put the ring in to where it needs to go. And I just kind of rotate it around where it's gonna be going to make sure that there's no snags, make sure there's no burrs that need to be filed down, anything like that. And we got a free rotation all the way around the piston. This one seems to be pretty good, so let's go ahead and drop it in. Go ahead and put this on here. Okay, so she's in there. Move it around. We're good. All right, now I put the last one in. I got my last one here, making sure the dot is facing up. Put it here inside the pliers. Open it up. And drop it on in. Flip it 180. There you go. She moves away around the way I need it to. All right, we're good. This thing's ready to go in there. So I'm gonna be putting on my new rod bearings. So we're gonna pop these out. These are the ones that I got from Ford. We open it up and we can see inside all this nice brown paper is our new bearing. So when you're looking at your piston, you're gonna see you have these little grooves right here off to one side. You have the same thing here with your rod bearing. One section of it is gonna be grooved. So what we're gonna do, 
is we're going to line one of those grooves up with that groove and push her down into place trying to make sure it's as level with the top as possible it's in there before we start dropping it down into the engine though i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put some assembly lube on it probably a lot more on there than what I need. Now when it comes to putting the actual pistons themselves in, you're gonna need something to help compress the rings and get them in here. This is a little tool Gabby and I went to AutoZone and picked up. It costs like 10 bucks to rent it. Um, it'll fit any size for the most part. It's got a little Allen key in here to help you adjust the size and it's got a metal band that goes around it to help you bring these in. Now with this, it does work. I got every other piston that I have in here on here using this. It's not the best though. This thing can slide around and it can move. Um, I've had problems when it gets down near the actual cylinder walls where one would slip out from the bottom so you have to make sure you have it really pressed up against there you got to make sure you really have it tight on the piston so as i put my piston in here one thing i'm doing is making sure everything is lined up the way i want it to be i'm going to make sure that the allen key is facing towards the top so when i tighten it down everything's going to be good there this on here as tight as i can i did make sure that i have part of the piston hanging out the bottom i also tried to make sure it was about as level as it could be because if this is at an angle uh, I'm worried that that may be how some of my piston ring slips out because it's not compressed or all the way around the way it needs to be. Make sure everything goes in the way it needs to. There we go. And if I didn't tell you previously, on the top of all of your pistons, at least the stock ones, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little arrow here on all of them that points to the direction in which these need to face all going forward. So what I'm going to do now is give this little tap in here you can use a tiny little rubber mallet i've been using the rubber end of this hammer to just tap these on in and she's in there but here's the stock rod end it still has the original bearing so i'm just going to pop this out i've always just done this by twisting them out they swing right out there you go I wipe this down just a tad. Same as with the upper part, there's going to be a groove here on either side. You line it up with the groove on your ring, bearing, rod, bearing, whatever. You know it's a bearing. And we set it in place. The other thing I'd like to point out is when you start to put this onto your rod, you need to make sure it was facing the way that it was when you took it off. Because the way these things are cut, there's only one way that they're going to go on there. When looking at the end of our rod here, Gotta make sure everything lines up. Okay, so I got it on there good the way it needed to be. Everything is lined up. This is the way it was cut. So if I flip this around though real quick just to show you guys, you'll be able to see. See how there's that large gap right here? It's because this is not the way it was cut. There would have been a valley up in there. It would have been exposed where oil would seep out. And then we'd probably get a problem like we had previously. So I'm gonna go ahead I'm just going to put these on here fingers tight right now to hold them in place. And then we will go over our torque specs. So we got in here, we got everything torqued down. All of these need to go through three rounds. Uh, the first one you're going to go through, you're going to do it down to 20 Newton meters, which is 14.75 foot pounds of torque on all these bolts. And then the second round you're going to go through and you're going to torque them down to 28 on the second round. And then once you do all that, we got to go back through and we got to go down with our angle and add 105 degrees to all these bolts. So I'm going to do that real quick. Day two. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put in our new MMR timing guides or timing chain guides and then our new sprocket. These things came in last night. Um, the box is pretty sweet. And then, man, look at these things. I really like how these look. I think they look pretty sweet. And it's, to me, a big upgrade over the stock plastic ones that you use. These ones that are gonna be going in here are billet and should hold up a lot better, especially with our Boss 302 tensioner. So, I'm gonna start getting that stuff together and see how it looks. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely a lot looser tolerance. Yeah. Alright, so just sliding these things on here. I put a little bit of lube on there just to help me get them on there. Dang, man. These things are tight. Ooh, thank God that hole lined up. <laughs> there we go. She looks party. Okay. 
And of course, once we get everything in place, we'll start getting our torque specs down for everything and get the other guide on here and we'll be good to go. For the other one, it's pretty straightforward. You just go ahead and slide it on and you're good to go. The tensioner is gonna go in here. Uh, we're gonna get the chain on here with the new sprocket as well and then get everything buttoned up. This is the old timing chain gear right here. This is a new one that we got from Boundary Racing, same people that made our oil pump gears. So as you can see, much like on the stock one, we have our, our notch right here. It goes onto the crankshaft and then we have our notch over here to help us set up with our timing. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this thing on and start setting up the timing on the driver's side. If we look at the timing chain right here, we have one dark link here and one here. These are gonna be used to help us with our timing. So if we go over here, as I said, we have the notch that sits on here and then also, if you look at your gear, you have one here that says L, and you have another one here that says R. This would, these here can be on either side, driver or passenger. So on the passenger, we're gonna be using the R, but on this one, we're gonna be lining it up here with the L. All right, so we had to turn this a little bit, put some more tension to it, but we did get everything lined up the way we needed to. As you can see, we have our darker link here, lined up with our L, and if we go down here, we got this here, lined up with our notch right there so we're good to go now what all we have to do is put the, our other piece on here and then slide the tensioner in so we're going to go ahead and put our other guide on here Just slide this thing in place <coughs> hopefully there we go there we go kind of there we go all right hold on you had that on over there this one uh -huh. did i there we go there we go. Voila. Exactly how we thought it would go. It looks pretty. Does this come all the way out or is it you just turn it down? No, it comes all the way out. You pull this and that thing slides all the way out. It's like a little grenade. The stock market. Oh, you did? Yep. How's that working out? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, everything's down right now. Mm -hmm. So what happened is when we, if we ever needed to set this again, we need to pull that out a little bit and then push that in, screw it back up, and then set the pin. We went ahead and we got the timing chains on there and the guides, so in the next episode, I think we're gonna go ahead and throw the oil pan on there as well as the timing cover, maybe our valve covers, I don't know. We'll see. Until next time, peace.